Welcome to Electro Online. Another very useful form of the Dirac delta function is when the x inside the function is multiplied by some constant k. And what we're going to show is that if we have a delta function that looks like this, delta function of k times x, which, where k is just any constant, that is the same as 1 over the absolute value of k times the delta function without the constant k in there, just the delta function of x. So in order to show that, we're going to use a few tricks. First of all, we're going to start with the integral. The integral of the delta function multiplied times the function because that's the only way a delta function actually has true meaning. And so we're going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity of some function that's defined over all x times the delta function of kx dx. And we're going to make the substitution where we're going to let y equals kx in such a way that x equals y over k. So the x in here is going to be replaced by y over k. Then if we take the derivative of x with respect to y, we get 1 over k, and of course then we multiply both sides by dy, we get dx equals 1 over k dy. So now we can make a substitution for the dx, we can make a substitution for the x here, and we can make a substitution for the x there. So let's see what happens. So this can now be written as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f, instead of x, we're now going to replace x by y over k times the delta kx, but remember that x was y over k, so k times over k, the k's cancel out, we simply get y, so delta function of y, and instead of dx, we write dy over k. All right, so, so far we're looking pretty good, but we have one concern. Notice that we have a function of y over k. Now, if k is a positive quantity, then no problem. We can simply go ahead and solve the problem and integrate. But if k is a negative number, that would cause the limits of integration to switch. So, if k is positive, and then let me just write it like this, is positive, then this equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of y over k times delta y, the direct delta function, times dy over k. Oop, not y, but k. And of course, this k will come out, the integral sign, that's not a problem, it's the k in here. Now, if k is negative, then this integral becomes the integral from infinity to minus infinity because this would then cause the function to be evaluated for a negative quantity instead of a positive quantity. So we have y over k. Essentially, the y becomes a negative y if you want to think about it that way. And so therefore, the limits of integration have to switch. And then we have delta y times dy over k. So essentially, if we're going to combine these two, what we have to then do is that means that we could put a negative sign in front here and switch the signs of integration back to the normal sense. And so that means that this is equal to plus or minus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function evaluated at y over k times the delta function y times dy over k. Now notice that the k can, uh, can come outside the integral sign, so essentially, let's do that. Let's take this k here and put it in front, so we have plus or minus uh, 1 over k times this integral. Now that looks pretty familiar. Again, we have some function that we multiply times the delta function. Ooh, and of course, I want to put parentheses around that. I don't want to forget the parentheses. And then we realize the definition of that, that simply means this product inside the integrand, when we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, it simply pulls out the function evaluated at zero because we have a delta function of y. So this is equal to plus or minus 1 over k times the function evaluated at zero. Okay, but how do we write plus or minus 1 over k? Because when k is positive, when k is negative, with other words, since we can have both of those, we can get rid of the plus and minus and simply write it as 1 over the absolute value of k times the function at 0. Now, we have something here that looks 
pretty close to what we have over there. We have a 1 over absolute value of k. Now we know where that absolute value of sign came from. But now, how do we show that those two are equal? Well, let's go back over here and write the integral. We can say that this is equal. So we can start with the same integral. The function of x multiplied times the delta function of kx dx from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, what we can do is we can replace this by something interesting. So this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function of x multiplied times. Hmm, what are we going to multiply times? How about that right there? The delta kx, if we're going to do that, we can say that's equal to 1 over the absolute value of k times the delta function of x. Now, of course, that's what we're trying to prove. But we can prove that by getting the same result as what we got over here by making the substitution. And that's what we're trying to do. So we still need a dx right here. That is now going to be equal to, we can pull the 1 over k out, so this is equal to 1 over the absolute value of k, times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x times delta x times dx. Now, of course, this by now should look pretty familiar to us. This is simply going to equal the function of evaluated 0. So this is equal to 1 over the absolute value of k times the function evaluated at 0. Now, notice we got the exact same result from this integral that we got over here from the integral when we made that substitution. And here we made this substitution. We took this portion of the integrand and we changed it for this portion. And so if we exchange this for this and we get the very same result as what I got over there, then we have proved that that is indeed correct. In other words, we can then clearly say that if we have a Dirac delta function that has a constant multiplied times x, that's equal to 1 over the absolute value of that constant times the Dirac delta function. And therefore, we then realize that whenever we use the Dirac delta function with a constant, not here, but the constant over here, that we simply get 1 over the absolute value of that constant times the function evaluated at 0 or at any other constant depending upon whether or not we have x there or, for example, x minus a or something like that. But that is how it's done. <clears throat>